In this video, I'm going to be asking if the Insta360 ONE X is still worth buying in 2020. And for a camera that was released back in October 2018, making it almost two years old, pretty long in the tooth for a consumer level 360 camera, I think you're going to be surprised by my answer. Let's go. Now there's plenty of other 360 camera options out there like the GoPro Max or even Insta360's new One R camera, but the Insta360 ONE X still holds a very special place in my heart. And there are some very solid reasons for that. Let's start with a brief look at the specs and a few things you need to know about how to interpret those, especially if you're relatively new to 360 cameras. For those of you that don't know what the ONE X is, it's a 360 degree camera, meaning it has two lenses, one on the front and one on the back. It can take a full video of everything that goes on all around it all at the same time. You don't have to point it, but you can select what you want to see afterwards. You can choose to view and render the video as a 360 immersive video where the viewer can scroll around or look around it if they're watching VR goggles like an Oculus headset and they choose or act as the director of what they want to see in your video or render it out as a 2D video like you're watching right now where you can choose what you want the viewer to see so you the creator are the director and that is the fundamental difference between these two modes. You can let the viewer choose in 360 immersive video or you as the creator choose what you want to show. There's room for both and I've used both and each is enjoyable in its own way. I've linked to some of my immersive videos in the video description here but in this mini review I'll be talking mostly about the 2D render where the creator directs the action. The ONE X can record standard footage up to 5.7K footage at 120 Mbps and it can record slow motion if you need to at 100 frames per second at 3K resolution for some cool effects like this. It can also also record in the log format for better color grading supposedly but to be honest I've never really used that just remember that 5.7k is for the whole 360 degrees of the sphere once you render that out in any 2d render like you'll see on this screen right now well you're looking at 1080p at best even less if you're zoomed in at all or using that 3k resolution slow motion because that 3k refers to the whole sphere so actually you're looking at something like 720p at best it's okay at a pinch but it's really built for viewing on mobile. Big screens will show the actual rendered resolution pretty quickly. So don't expect that a 5.7K 360 camera is going to give you 4K quality for your rendered 2D videos because it won't. There are 8K consumer 360 cameras out there now, but the workflow is nowhere near as simple and pleasant as a camera like the One X. They're a different class entirely in my mind and not worth it actually, I think, for the reward effort ratio, especially if you prefer editing on mobile but just so you know that's an option now the one X has photo capability as well at 18 megapixels per shot which is good but the best bit of that is the app you can export directly out of that for quick and easy great results and although maybe outgunned these days by the Ricoh Z1 and even the almost ancient Xiaomi MySphere you can still get some pretty good results but really I use this for video for 99% of the time these days it has Wi-Fi connectivity built in it uses the amazing flow state stabilization that insta360 uses and it also also has HDR capability for video too for amazing dynamic range. Let me just pause here and emphasize how good these two features are. The flow state stabilization that Insta360 uses is to my mind second to none, especially using the motion blur effect in footage like hyperlapses. Just fantastic. And also the HDR video mode is something that's pretty hard to find in similar priced cameras and performs astonishingly well and in my view is one of the killer features of this camera. Find out more in my video, you can find that in the description. Now the camera works incredibly well with the invisible selfie stick and you can buy the bullet time mount for those types of shots if you really want it. I find that it's a marketing thing really and I'm sure I used it occasionally at the beginning but it's kind of gimmicky and fun to start with and I definitely haven't used it in the last six months so I don't really miss that. The best accessories I bought for the One X are the rubber lens cap. I did break a lens once and boy, it was a pain getting it fixed. You can find that story over three videos on my channel. Check the description for those links. But the spare battery and charging cradle have been great, especially because the cradle has a USB-C input as well, which speeds up that charging process a little too. And the other great thing has been the three meter extended selfie stick by Telesid. It's not as rigid as the smaller stick. So sometimes you can see the end of the pole 
but it's worth it for those ultra drone like shots when you can just get that extra height or distance away from you for a wider more spectacular shot getting all that background. Now the crowning glory that has breathed extra life into this camera is the fact that I can use it with the One R app and use cool features like the different views I can select between each pivot point when I'm editing on the app. I do all my editing on the app and also the auto tracking feature that you can use too is brilliant. Just to mention some of the features available in the One R app for One X users. So at the moment, all this adds up to the One X remaining my go-to 360 camera while I'm still familiarizing myself with the One R. Yep, I still prefer my One X to the One R. And I think that's because I prefer the form factor and the better stitching result I can get because of the thinness of the camera compared with the One R. I like the fact that I can get cheap batteries for it as well, so I can always have one spare. And I like the fact that I can shoot without a cage and that the selfie stick thread is built into the camera. Though I know that this is a weak spot in the build and you need to take care because you really don't want this snapping off. And yes, the One R comes with the actual 4K module as well as the 360 camera module and as the app develops more and more features will be available exclusively for the One R I'm expecting but my bottom line is that the One X is still an amazing camera and well worth it in 2020 if you can get one. These are becoming increasingly difficult to find and I think it's set to become a bit of an era classic and even a bit of a design classic too. My advice would be to get one while you still can. Check out this video if you've enjoyed this one today and I'll see you again soon I hope. Make sure you subscribe to get all my latest content. My name's Sarb Johel and good night.